Hello, this is Gary Davis, and this is a quick few tip and tricks on the new 3DS Max 2014, and these are primarily specific to Mental Ray. Uh, I'm going to just show a couple of things, but before I do that, I'd like to thank uh, Marlin Studios for these assets. This is actually uh, Marlin Studios' website, just marlinstudios.com. They offer a lot of great texture maps that I've used over the years and uh, have been really phenomenal assets to use in, my, in production, but they also sell uh, 3D models, and I'm using some from their uh, Victorian homes assets here. So this is a pretty typical scene, and I've got this set up sort of the old school way. If I just hit render on this, you can see that we've got Metal Ray as our renderer, and then we've got a final gather pass, and there are no lights in this scene, but uh, you know we've, we get our final gather pass and we get our image. So it's pretty much set up so, sort of the old school way. And then typically what you might do, instead of using the sun and sky system, I would come over here and do a skylight and actually add this to my scene. And I can certainly still do that. Um, one of the things that I also might want to do to this is actually add an image into my background. So I'm just going to drag and drop from a browser and say I want to add this to the viewport background and as my environment map. So now you can see even in the nitrous viewports, we're getting a little bit of a bluish hue to our lighting. And then one thing I want to check on this light is that we are going to use our environment. So now we are really getting that bluish hue. And if I go ahead and do a rendering right now, as expected, you can see that our scene is lit by the... Uh, the background and our final gather is doing our indirect illumination and, and so on. So that's kind of the old school way of doing things. A couple of things I want to point out here under the rendering environment uh, dialog, if I take a drag and drop the environment over into the material editor and look at this, there's something new in the 2014 release that we've actually changed this so that the environment by default is now spherical and that's, that's kind of nice. Um, one other thing we can uh, take a look at, or a couple of other things we can take a look at that are new in the new in, uh, Mental Ray within Max 2014 is a, f a couple of different things. First, I'm going to switch from the sampling mode under the rendering dialog from the classic ray trace method of using 1 and 4. And there's one problem with that. I don't want to say a problem, but something to consider is that when you do it increments from these minimum and maximum settings for any aliasing of like 1 to 4 to 16 to 64, those are exponential jumps. And if that's the only option, then that's the only option, and you never really had to think about it. But there is a new way that is the default in 2014 called the Unified Ray Trace Method, which is recommended. And this gives you more granular control over the minimum and maximum. And you might think um, 1 to 128 using the old method would be extremely time consuming. But what you have is this quality control for your um, actual override for your uh, any aliasing settings. So now when I go ahead and render this out, I'm using, uh, I'm still using kind of the old way of final gather and whatnot, but I, you can see that I got a much faster render with any aliasing settings that are kind of set down to draft uh, using the quality of 0.15, but I'm getting a pretty nice render. Now what I can do is uh, jump over and look at some other new features. I'm going to jump into the Global Illumination tab, and instead of using Final Gather, I'm going to turn off Final Gather so I won't have to do that pass. And what I'm going to do is say I want to skylight to uh, the skylight to illuminate my scene from IBL or image-based lighting. So to just immediately reiterate, I'm not using Final Gather anymore, and instead of using Final Gather, I'm using that image in my scene to do image-based lighting. So now you can see we're getting that nice new unified sampling within our anti-aliasing, and we're also getting bounced lighting or indirect illumination without the need for Final Gather. So this is a great time saver, and you can see that we're getting you know that our nice rendering uh, with our indirect illumination and our nice draft anti-aliasing actually looks pretty good. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is a nice little trick uh, under the rendering dialog. Way down here at the bottom, we've now exposed the ability to have string options here. And one of them uh, that I'll show you here, I can just say, um, quote, progressive, unquote, is on. And what this is going to do is I still don't have Final Gather enabled, but you'll notice now that after this rendering does one pass, you're going to see it go back through and do what's called a progressive refinement. So now we've changed Metal Ray using a variable string, and now you can see that it's actually doing one pass of refinement, now a third, fourth, fifth, and so and now we're done. So that's a pretty cool little option that you have the ability to access these Metal Ray strings in here. And another one I'm going to do is actually delete this and go into our render elements. Now this one here, I'll cut and paste this from a text file, and I'm going to be providing this on the uh, YouTube channel and my blog and all that good stuff. But I'm going to just take this uh, text here and say copy. 
And what this does, you can see here that this, it's basically an ambient occlusion on the GPU, which is pretty, pretty cool for metal ray users. And this is going to say that the frame buffer is frame buffer zero. What that means is that the first render element that I do, and you know, that I can add any number of render elements into a Mac scene. I'm just going to pick any one of these, just arbitrarily pick the first one, alpha. But what's going to happen is if I go back to the render dialog and paste in those uh, string options, this string is going to say override the first render element. And instead of using a render element of alpha, I might want to rename this GPU AO. And now when I do my uh, last rendering, you're going to see that we have, we still have our uh, indirect illumination coming from our environment, which in this case is a JPEG image. Uh, we're getting our really nice anti-aliasing. The rendering is going through. And then when it's done, we're also going to get a render element that was rendered on the GPU of this computer, which is our ambient occlusion pass for compositing. So as this finishes up, now you'll see the uh, ambient occlusion layer pop up. And this was rendered on the video card, not on the CPU. So that's a really nice way to start taking advantage of both the GPU and the CPU which is not very traditional use of, uh, or not very traditional use of the hardware when using Metal Ray. So that's my tip and trick uh, for the day. A lot of new options in Max 2014 for doing uh, rendering with Metal Ray.